Hello, today we're going to talk about the game Shooting Stars from Ikinto in 1980. It's a tactical game of fighter combat in space. And typical of their the games, they come in these big boxes, you know, like uh, 14 inches by 11 by like an inch and a half thick. There it's, there it's fine. It's a uh, depicts, you know, Russian CCCP is for the Soviet Union um, and presumably a, a US forces going at it over the earth. So typical of Yakinto games, um, they have nice components in my opinion. Uh, they have somewhat interesting mechanics and they usually don't have much steam and this one is similar to those. So you get a little bit of the theme on the back. First of all, there's several solitaire scenarios, which is nice. It's, you know, ship-to-ship -ship combat, simultaneous movement, vector movement. I'll talk about the components of scale. It's a, you know, hex, hex game. So it's 100 kilometers per hex, five to, sec five to 10 seconds per turn, individual ships, two to four, but there's, you know, s several solitaire scenarios. So it's actually one to four. Uh, 30 minutes to 3 hours to be in this scenario, kind of middle complexity. So a little bit of theme, or kind of giving an overview. Shooting Stars is a tactical level game of fighter versus fighter combat beginning in the near future. Scenarios range from the first U.S.-Soviet space war to asteroid pirates to, to alien invaders. The unique movement system gives the feel of piloting a one-man craft in space while at the same time providing a fast-paced, smooth-flowing game. The advanced game and optional rules allow for energy usage in 15 areas of ship's functions and provide a myriad of special weapons. Scenarios range from solitary scenarios such as battling an unmanned outpost, destroying rebel blockade runners and protecting an orbital depot from asteroid pirates, to multiplayer situations where a group of fighters attack a space station. So that's a little bit of theme there. Um, so the real way to get a sense of the kind of theme is to go, the scenarios, it's got several different scenarios that kind of go from, you know, U.S. versus Soviet to aliens, etc. That kind of gives you, going through those scenarios, it kind of gives you a sense of the the theme. But a little more here, um, Shooting Stars is a game of fighter to fighter combat in outer space. This game takes place in our solar system between 20 to 75 years in the future, so from 2000 to 2055, so we're right in the middle of that now. Players assume the roles of fighter pilots flying for the United States, Soviet Union, and interstellar corporations. Pirates, the inner satellites, the outer satellites, the United Earth Federation, or the alien invaders, depending on the scenarios being used for the game. So a lot of interesting scenarios. Actually, so the uh, I'm not quite sure what to expect because there's a review in Aries you know, magazine around that during that same you know golden era of sci-fi games that uh, said it wasn't you know pretty much ripped on it. My I think, but then I've heard recently a lot of people like the game, so I'm I tend to like Yakinto games. So let's see where it goes. And also there's two other games that I've done, you know, plays and reviews for. That's Asteroid Pirates and Demons Run, which are basically a subset. They can be viewed as a subset of this game because um, they develop off the same, you know, concept. So, but they're smaller games for a specific scenario. So as far as the components, of course, there's the rule books, 20 pages, black and white. And we'll see how similar it is to other Yukito. It, it'll, I imagine, go to some depth, maybe give some examples. So, go into that in detail. Kind of summary table for kind of a player gauge events, game combat results table, long range scanner table, basic game combat results table, and computer program matrix. So, that'll be useful. Four copies of that. Then they have these, I think they call them screens. There's actually four of these, but you kind of use it to hide what you're doing. I'm not sure how effective that is, but it comes with four of those. 
And then there's four of these, the control console. So it has, basically when you go through play, you'll be having these level indicators on here to show kind of what's going on. Um, so we'll see how that works out. There's four of that. Four of those. And a typical Yakinto tray, which you know doesn't uh, lays flat. Actually, in the rules, it talks about how you can put using cellophane and cardboard. You can cut out sections and close these off, which kind of kind of reminiscent of the time, I guess. But it, you basically lay it flat. And but I like their their trays, and they come in different colors. This one happens to have a black tray. Of course, the Ikinto dice, which I like, heavy and you know large. So it's a good mix of counters here. And I'll show the unique ones. So the counters, first of all, these are ships. Actually, I'm a little bit disappointed because usually the Yakinto has these thicker, has thicker ships that are basically twice the size. These have more of a basically a normal size counter you'd expect. Because um, I kind of like the thick ones, but my my guess is the reason either they did that because they didn't have the thick ones yet, or maybe they did them thinner so that they'd more closely match these other devices that, that wouldn't be thick, so maybe that's the rationale before that. These are the individual unique counters. First of all, there's uh, eight different types of ships indicated by different colors. So they're just, you know, the number of the ship, there's four of each type, and then, you know, left or right indicating the you know, direction. So they're all unique and look nice. I think they're they're fine. And then these are the current direction markers corresponding to each of the ships, and there's four of each. Those, you know, numbered, of course. And these are some weapons. So there's several of these. There's the a energy bolt, a tractor pulse, and a missile. And these are action markers that uh, action and then status marker that go on the the consoles. So these are ship specification cards. There's eight of these, and they have a neat identifier. Yeah. And then they have the specifications on the back. So eight, eight unique ones of those. This is a weapon effects marker. And there's a few items here that kind of fit you know, on the hexes of the board. Um, there's a space station you know, that can be used in a scenario. And a moon or large asteroid. And these are two different large ships. And then these, there's a whole bunch of a variety of asteroids. Here's a couple of examples. So in the advanced game, then there's different markers for the, the use of, of different weapons. So this is, a, this is an energy web. So it indicates where that's going. This is for a tractor beam. And these are for a, a push wave. So on the last component, of course, is the map. It's a kind of a medium cardstock material. I think it looks okay. Um, so it's, it's got hex on it, and uh, so it also has a you know, missile speed track, an asteroid speed track, phase indicator, and this is on you know both sides. And then in the middle here, there's a couple. Um, you know, directional zone indicators. So that's the map. So we'll start talking about the rules here. So first of all, there's eight of these ship specification cards. So on, you know, the one side it gives you a pictorial depiction, which is nice. And then on the other side, you have you know its name, type, time period. So it sets up in different time periods. Energy factors, long-range scanners, thrusters, shields, 
laser batteries, weapons pod, computer systems, overload capacity, tactile scanner, thrusters, side cloak, center, starboard, life support systems, and energy torpedoes. And these, of course, differ for each, each one. So next there's interpreting of the uh, basic game control consoles. So there's the the phase number. It shows each phase. Complete game turn. Be the heading 1 through 16. Each of these represents a single phase. And these are the different elements that correspond to that phase. Right turn, left turn. Used to indicate any turns made. Thrust to indicate any thrust movement during a particular phase. Drift you know, say, to note any drift movement. Fire note any attacks for, and to also note when they can be made again. Speed uh, d drift sequence so how many times the ship is required to make a drift movement during the course of the turn? So the basic game, the sequence of play, it's played in turns. Each turn is broken down in a series of phases. These are numbers 1 to 16. Each phase is further broken down in several actions. The actions in each phase are turns, thrust, drift, and fire. When all the actions have been completed, a single phase is completed. When all phases have been completed, a turn is completed, a new turn begins. The sequence of play. Step A, control console notation. B, phase execution. One turn, left and right. Two thrust, three drift. Four fire. Five fire readiness notation. Six repeat steps one through five for all 16 phases in the turn. Step C, current speed determination. Step D, current direction determination. Step E, drift sequence notation. Step F, special activity phase. Step G, return to step A, a new turn begins. All actions performed in sequence of play are considered to be simultaneous. All ships move in and fire at the same time. A player sitting on a map board site containing the asteroid missile phase tracks will go first. Movement and fire will then be made clockwise. Control console notation. During, this, during sequence of play, step A, all players will note on their control consoles all actions other than fire to be performed by their ships during the course of the turn. This will be repeated each turn until the game ends. Control console notation is to be done simultaneously by all players. This is to be done in secret. No other players are allowed to see the control console notations of any other player until the execution of step B. General rules. No more than one action marker may be placed in a single box during a single phase. Two, no more than nine action markers may be placed in a single column. Action markers are used in the following columns only, right turn, left turn, thrust. Players may use any number of action markers from none to the maximum available for the ship each turn. Action markers not used may, may not be accumulated from turn to turn. The ship may perform more than one action in a single phase. Status markers are used in the following columns, drift fire speed. No markers are used in either the drift sequence or phase number columns. The drift sequence is merely a statement of which phases movements are required. The phase track on map board is used to keep track of each phase as every phase occurs. Note, a single player will be in charge of calling out the number of each phase as it occurs and moving a status marker a phase track of the map board to keep track of all phases that have already been completed. Drift sequence and placement of status markers in a drift column is determined by the speed of the ship. A control console notation is made. Action marker placed in a left turn box indicates the ship will make left turn. Action marker in right turn indicates right. Action marker in thrust, thrust. Drift indicates drift. For placing a stats mark in firebox, consult combat. Ship movement. With the exception of drift movement, all ship movement is voluntary. When ship counter is moved, only the ship counter is moved. The current direction marker remains in the ship's starting hex until the end of the turn. A ship that moves off the map board may not return to the map board during the remainder of the game. Ship placement. 
The shape of the map board must be placed to face a hex head rather than a hex angle. Turns. A turn is a ship movement made within a hex. The ship does not move out of hex, it turns as a result of that turn. A ship turns by moving the front of the ship 60 degrees to adjacent hex side. A ship may turn only once per phase. Only a turn movement will turn a ship. A ship may thrust once per phase. A thrust always moves the ship in the hex adjacent to the ship's front. A thrust is known on the control console by placing an action marker in a box under the thrust heading. A thrust will not change the direction of the ship's, of the ship's facing. Drift. A ship will make a total drift movement as a direct response to the ship's current speed. Refer to the basic game control console. Under drift sequence, opposite each speed number for each phase is a number of or a group of characters. These numbers represent the phases during which the ship is required to make a drift movement. Drift movements are made to the front of the current direction marker. Drift movements are always one hex in the ship's current direction. Drift movement is on the control console by placing a status marker in the box on the phase in which the movement is to occur. Thrust drift. While the placement of all action markers is by player choice, there are conditions that govern the placement of some thrust markers. Any phase in which a drift movement occurs is called a drift phase. Once the final thrust action has been marked, no other thrust actions may occur in the phases. They are not drift phases unless all drift phases contain a thrust action. Before a ship is allowed to thrust through a non-drift phase, all drift phases must also contain thrust. Combat. Combat, combat in the basic game represents ships firing at other ships with beamed laser weapons. Beamed weapons fire. A ships used in all ships used in the basic game have beamed, beamed weapons. All beamed weapons fire in a 60 degree arc based on the front of the firing of ship. Any target ship within the 60 degree arc may be fired at. May be fired on. Ships in the same hex may not fire at each other. A ship may fire on one target ship per phase only. A ship may fire targets that are 12 hexes or less in distance from the firing ship. These 12 hexes are counted exclusive of the firing ship's hex, inclusive of the target ship's hex. Beamed weapons may only fire every three phases. To know which of to know which is the next phase in which a ship is eligible to fire, place a status marker in the box in the fire column on the control console. A player is not required to fire at any target, or all fires voluntary. All fires simultaneous. However, players should determine the results of combat in sequence to avoid confusion. Special weapons. Special weapons are listed in the optional rules. These weapons may be used in the base game. Overload. Overload is a condition in which a ship is especially vulnerable to enemy fire and may even be destroyed because of excessive speed. A ship moving at speeds 1 through 8 is not in overload condition. A ship moving at speeds 9 through 16 is in overload condition. A ship moving at any speed greater than 16 is automatically destroyed and removed from the game. A ship fired on while in overload condition may suffer additional damage because of this overload. How to hit a target. To turn if beam weapons fire hits the target, the firing player must count the number of hexes separating the firing ship from the target ship. The firing player must then roll two dice and then the scores together. The score of the dice roll equals or exceeds the distance in hexes the target ship is hit by the fire. Effects of fire. If the target ship has been hit by the fire, the target will receive damage from that fire. To determine the amount of damage the target ship will contain, consult the table below, the basic game combat results table. Across the top of the table is the range in hexes to the target ship. Down the left side are numbers 2 through 12, representing the score of the roll of two dice. Roll two dice and add the scores. Cross get the score, the distance. At the intersection, in this box will be a number. The number represents the damage point sustained by the target ship. For every damage point received, the target ship will lose one action marker. When a ship has lost all of that ship's action markers, the ship is destroyed and the ship counter and direction marker are removed from the map board. And if a ship in the overload condition is hit by fire, the fire will add plus one to the dice roll for each speed rating above eight. Must remove action markers from the control console as well as damage. The markers lost may be removed from any phase at the owner player's discretion. If ship moves off of the map board, it is considered to be destroyed for victory purposes.
Current speed, how to determine speed. A ship's speed may change from turn to turn depending upon the action of the ship. Current speed is the measure of a ship's speed during the course of a single turn. This measurement is based on the distance in hexes from the current direction marker and ship's marker. This distance in hexes is the current speed of the ship. Current speed is determined at the end of the turn and applies to the next turn. This procedure is followed at the end of each turn. How to note current speed. Current speed is noted on the control console by placing a status marker on the appropriate box. Current direction, general, general rules. Current direction is based on the facing of the current direction marker and the position of the marker ship. Current direction marker is used with its corresponding ship only. Current direction marker must face the hex side. Shown below is a diagram of the six degree arc of a current direction marker. As long as the ship is within a totally shaded hex, this will be the ship's current direction, and the ship will continue to make all drift movements in this direction. If a ship is in a hex that is only partially shaded, the player owning the ship may elect to maintain the same current direction or use a other current direction. How to determine current direction? The current direction marker must face the hex side rather than the hex angle. A ship may change its current direction at the end of a turn by moving from one current direction zone to another current direction zone. When a ship ends a turn in a current direction zone other than one in which it started, the current direction marker is changed to reflect the new zone. A ship will always drift in the direction of the current direction throughout the entire turn even as the ship enters other direction zones during the course of that turn. The current direction marker is adjusted to any new direction the ship may be drifting in at the end of the turn. This current direction will then apply to the next turn. The current direction marker is then placed under the ship counter. Note the camera must be taking sure that the facing is not changed in either the ship or direction marker counters. How to win. To gain a total victory, all opposing ships must be eliminated. To gain a marginal victory, more opposing ships must be lost than are lost to the friendly side, by the friendly side. Any other, any other result is considered a draw. Some scenarios have specific victory conditions for the scenario. The advanced game rules. These rules build the basic game and components used in the advanced game, unit counters, the ship statistics card, advanced game control console, advanced game combat results table, so the advanced game control console card. Information common to all tracks. Each track is headed by the name of the track. Beneath each heading are a series of number of boxes. All these boxes represent the track. Each box is called a level. A single track is composed of a number of levels. The higher the number of levels of the track, the more effective the track is. Sections using the advanced game. So we use the base control console, the energy factors, we talked about the basic game control console previously. The energy factors represent the total fuel supply available to the ship. This is the total energy available to all the ship's systems, tracks. There are three tracks under the energy factors heading. The first track represents the energy in units hundreds, and then tens, and then ones. Tech scan. The tech scan represents the function of the tactical scanner. This is this is the futuristic equivalent of today's radar. It allows you to see the opponent and know the opponent is at great distances. The maximum level of tech scan for a ship is 9. Side thrusters represent the maneuver engine of the ship. These are the engines that which turn the ship. The levels refer to the number of 60 degree turns that a ship can make during a single game turn, as well as the cost and energy factors to make the turns. The maximum level for side thrusters is 9. Main thrusters. Main thrusters represent the main engine of the ship. These are the engines that drive the ship forward. The levels refer to the number of thrusts that a ship can make during the course of a single game turn, as well as the number of energy factors that are lost for all thrusts made during the turn. Shields. The shield is a def defensive weapon that is a screen of energy generated by a ship to repulse or lessen the effects of energy enemy fire on the ship. The shields will defend the ship against attacks from six different directions. There are six different Shield tracks on the console, one for each of these defensive directions. The maximum level for each shield track is 5. 
cloak. The cloak is an electronic defensive device that is designed to make ship that generates it hard to accurately fix with a tech scanner. The maximum level for a cloak is 9. Laser batteries. Laser batteries represent the laser weapons that ship is armed with. There are three battery tracks under the laser battery setting. These represent the port center and starboard batteries. The maximum level for each is 9. Life support system. Maximum level of life support for a ship is 13. Current direction. The current direction track is included to show on the console the current direction of drift for the ship. It serves as a backup in the event that the direction marker on the map board is moved inadvertently. Tracks are used in the advanced game. Computer systems, altitude and altitude, alpha level, beta level, current program, missile pod, energy torpedoes are not used in the advanced game unless using the optional rules that apply. All these tracks are explained the optional rules. Advanced game console setup. The ship statistics card lists all the tracks for the ship and the maximum levels for each of those tracks. All console setup is based directly based on ship statistics card. Status marker is used to show the maximum level for each track. The above procedure is used to set up the following tracks. Tech scan, thrusters, main and side, shields, cloak, laser batteries, port center, and starboard. When setting up the current direction track, place a status marker in the systems in the ship's current direction as determined by the placement of the current direction marker in the map board. To set up the view screen, place a ship's status card in this area of the console. If a track receives damage, that track will be lower depending on the amount of damage. Explanation of the ship statistics card. All ship types have a name and class by which they are known. These items have been added to, the, to a, give a color to the game. They serve no other purpose in the play of the game. Time period. During the time period in which the GIST game takes place, there are four distinct periods of technological improvements in ship design and construction. Statistics by track. All statistics given for each ship track represent the maximum level in each track available to the ship. If there is no number listed opposite track, the ship may not use this track. Advanced game combat. General rules. All general rules in the basic game rules still apply. Each level of a laser battery represents one combat factor. Fields of fly fire. In the advanced game rules, beamed weapons may be located in four different locations. Port battery, starboard battery, center battery, some ships have turret mounted batteries. Note if a target is in the center field of fire, the port and starboard guns may also fire on it. Each of these weapons will have a different field of fire. A field of fire represents the area of space that can be fired on by a weapon. Consult the diagrams below for the fields of fire of the various variously positioned weapons. All beam weapons from this from the same ship that fire on a single target will total the CFs for combat purposes. How to hit a target. All basic game rules still apply to with the following modifications. For every level of attack scan the firing ship uses, the firing player will add plus one to the dice roll. For every level of cloak that the target ship uses, the firing player will subtract minus one from the dice roll to hit the target. Shield defense pattern. pattern. A ship's shields will cover the ship in six directions. These directions correspond to six hex sides of the hex the ship is in. Penetrating the shields. When a ship is hit by fire, that fire will strike one of the ship's shield's defensive areas. Subtract the level of the shield used from the total CFs hitting the shield. A positive result is the number of CFs that will penetrate the shield. A zero or negative result means that no CFs have penetrated the shield. Any CFs that penetrate the shield will inflict damage on the target ship. How to use the combat results table. Read the red die and the white die separately. Read the red as tens. Read the white as individual units. Across the top of the tier tier numbers, these numbers correspond to the total number of combat factors that have hit the target ship. This is the combat results table. Dice roll. Beneath each of these numbers is a column composed of 36 boxes. In each of these boxes are one or more letters or numbers. The letters correspond to a specific track in the control console. Down the left side of CRT are the numbers on 36. These correspond to the line of boxes beside it, the dice results. Cross grid the dice roll with a column being used. The resulting box will contain the information as to the damage suffered by the various tracks of the ship. Ship damage. 
Damage to a ship is shown on the CRT and letters and numbers. The letters signify the truck received damage. Numbers signify the number of levels received for this truck. If the letter is followed by a number, this indicates the truck a number of levels lost due to damage to that truck. If the letter is listed in no following number, this indicates the truck in a single level lost is on the that track. Listed below are all the letters and the tracks they represent. If a ship receives damage in a track that is an optional rules track and is not being used in the game, this damage is treated as five energy factors lost per hit received. How to know ship damage? Ship damage is done by reducing the levels in the damage track to reflect the damage. With the stats marker down one level for each level destroyed in the track. Effects of ship damage. Damage to a track will lower the maximum level available for that track. When all Levels on a track have been eliminated, the function on that track may not be used for the remainder of the game. Damage to a ship is permanent and accumulated during the course of the game. As a player receives damage, that player will move in the status, the status marker on the damage track to reflect the damage. The ship receives an energy leak damage to result. The ship will lose 10 energy factors each turn as, as a result of this damage. A ship will be considered destroyed. That ship receives damage that eliminates one of the following tracks. All energy factor tracks, life support track. When using the energy usage optional rule, a ship is also considered destroyed if that ship's energy factor tracks are eliminated through the dam of usage or damage or a combination of both. A destroyed ship and that ship's current direction marker are removed from the game board immediately. How to win? A player must destroy all opposing ships to win unless otherwise specified by the scenario being used. So then there's several optional rules that can be added on independently if you want to add, as I say, more flavor to the game. Uh, optional rule of energy uses, which is used in the advanced game. This rule forces the players to be more conservative in the way the way they play the game. Basis of the rules that every action of a ship makes, there's a cost in energy units. Using energy markers, action markers are used to note the use of the various tracks in the control console. Any function that has to be performed must be noted by placement of the action marker on the appropriate track at the appropriate level. Players may determine the level used in each track at the player's discretion. To an action in a particular track in the level of that action, the action marker is placed in the level directly below the level of the activity. When this is done, all energy expenditure is noted by adjusting the energy factor track to the corresponding energy used for the turn. All tracks must have that track's activity noted during their control console notation, with the exception of the laser tracks. These may be noted only in the phase the laser is to be fired. At the end of the turn, all action markers are removed from the control console. Each damage ship uses levels on one of the tracks of the control console card. Corresponding number of energy units are lost and are removed from the energy factor track. The following tracks are the following tracks use one factor of energy per move for each level used. Long range scan, tech scan, side thrusters, any shield, cloak, or attitude change. Each main thruster used in a game move costs 10 energy factors. Each phase that laser batteries are fired, an amount of energy factors is spent, which is equal to the total number of laser battery levels used in its firing. Note wing mounted batteries must fire together even if only one has a target in its field of fire. After the control console notation phase and prior to the phase execution phase, each player reveals his control console to the other player. The amount of energy used for the game move so far is determined and the energy factor tracks are adjusted accordingly. Laser fire and energy type weapons reduce the energy factor tracks at the instant they are fired. Overload, so, and this is actually an advanced game rule. Each game move shows traveling a speed which causes it to overload, nine or more. The amount of overload is recorded in the overload track. Each check of speed is over 8 causes the overload marker to be moved up one level. 10 units in the overload track. It should be reduced drain off. May reduce drain off 10 units, one level of the lower each game move, which the ship is not moving at overload speed. Each level of overload increases combat results table by one column when the ship is hit by any kind of fire. If it, exceeds, if it exceeds its maximum overload capacity, it's destroyed. Then there's a long range scanner and hidden movement, basically tying into the you know, scanning abilities of the ships, and you can have some hidden movement that way. 
altitude and levels. So it's a way of tracking not just two-dimensional, but actually adding a Z component to it. Asteroids. So multi-hex asteroids are included in this sheet. Asteroids block fire, a fire and laser batteries. They always in, move in the direction of the white arrow printed on them. Begin the game with a speed of 8 and drift accordingly. They may not change speeds. Any ship that occupies the hex of an asteroid is destroyed. Only tractor beams or pulses and push waves affect asteroids. These space station outposts. Space stations may use up two thrusts per game move. Will drift like any normal ship. May be armed with any type of weapon available to any ship. Space station may rotate one hex per phase. It's always in the counterclockwise direction. Space station is armed with six, nine level laser batteries. One battery is located in each of the six outside hexes. Space station is assumed to have an antimatter screen to practice from asteroids moving near it. Outposts, they may drift, it's a speed game in motion, but never, may never thrust. Post laser batteries are considered to be turrets and they have a 360 degrees field of fire. Each outpost will have one laser battery with six holes available for firing at the beginning of the game. Black hole gra gravity is considered to be off the map, but it exerts its influence with all objects on the map. And then any objects in certain rows are affected by that, it affects their, their motion. Uh, computer program. Ship's computer program indicates the ship's board computer state of combat readiness. State of aggressiveness is from 1, highly offensive, to 13 being defensive. The current program affects the ship's ability to hit a target or be hit by the opposing firing ship. And then here's some advanced weapons, optional weapons games rule. Space station field of fire, shown here. Terminals, weapons may be used on any ship type as long as they are fulfilled. So it can't use it if it's from an earlier time period. Ship may not use it if the ship's weapon pod does not have enough levels to carry it. If using these weapons in the base game, each hit they score will remove one action marker from target. Every five energy factors must count as one action marker lost. So missiles, smart nuclear. Warheads armed, guided missiles. There are three separate types of missiles in the game. This is the counter used here. Prior to missiles being fired, the counter must be placed in weapon spot of the console. This call move down the track level one per phase. Each phase until the counter is in the one box. Missile may not be fired and the counter is in the one box. When the missile is fired, the counter is placed on the map board and diagram above. Only one missile counter may be on the weapon spot track at one time. When the missile is fired, place an action marker under the weapons track to show it's been fired. The time period is 1, 2, 3. Pod cost is 2 per missile, energy is 0. And one fire is shown there. How to move the weapon. Speed which moves is fired. For example, if the firing ship speed is in it's five, the missile will have a speed of five minutes fired. Each missile has an acceleration value that represents the number of hexes the missile may move in a phase. If an acceleration movement is made, this will increase the missile speed for the next turn. The missile is able to turn a thrust for, an, for a limited number of turns depending on the type of missile. Some missiles have blast ra radius. Firing players, the option is to when to detonate the missile. It's a time period type detonation effects. So the different missiles you roll in the different columns, you know, nine column for instance, and how many times you roll to determine damage. Target ship shields do not affect the missile attack. If weapon pod levels are eliminated through damage before almost fired, the still carried by ship will detonate. The screws of the ship destroyed. Any ships within blast radius will then be attacked. Energy bolt. Energy bolt is plasma weapon. That's the marker, time period two. We we'll use no weapons pods as not carried in the weapons pod. Move is a straight line. The energy bolt will attack any ship in the same hex as its bolt. Any ship or missile is destroyed and moved from that as its bolt. Note that ship or station shields does not affect the attack. Any asteroid attack is not 
Yes, your tag's not destroyed. Your ball is destroyed. A large ship that is tag is not destroyed. Damage will be determined by rolling 9 on CRT two times. Station of the is not destroyed. Damage will be determined by rolling 9 three times. Tractor beam will cause damage to any ship. The pattern overlaps as altering the target's ship movement in current direction. Text of each number section of tractor beam will have different effect. The ship was in that section. One will receive damage by rolling on the eight column and pull four X's in that direction. Two will receive by rolling six column, three X's. Three, four column, two hexes, four, two column, and one hex. Push wave, it will be repelled in the direction opposite the pattern. That's where it shows here. Push wave's pattern is located in the session sheet. It's composed of four individual interlocking wave patterns with the results of attack. In the one, we pushed one hex. We're gonna roll for damage one of the CRT, two, two hexes, two column, three, three hexes, roll in the three column, four, four hexes, and roll in the four column. Vampire field is an energy field that absorbs energy. Any ship that's in the field of fire will lose all energy devoted to movement for the entire turn. One half is absorbed by the firing ship. Time warp. Time work used to keep skip all ships involved in the battle for a few seconds in time. All ships on the map are attacked. Results the firing player will roll and die. The result of this die is the number of phases that must be skipped by all ships on map board. Space warp. The space warp is used by a ship to travel between two separate points instantaneously. The firing ship's position on the map board facing in current will be changed by the fire I version field. Similar to the effect of space warp, except that it's an offensive weapon. Energy web. The energy web represents a linear obstacle of energy that may both slow the movement of a ship by time you pass through it. Shows speed 7. The ship will take damage on 6 CRT, etc. Tractor pulse. Same as tractor beam, except it's a single pulse with a solid beam. Any ship that is in the same hex as tractor pulse is attacked. The target ship is moved 4 axes directly away from the pulse. The target ship also sees damage come from CRT. And there are scenarios. Some are one player, two player. Some are US versus the Soviet Union. Some are against aliens. Some is, are the United Earth Federation. Some involve space stations. So the, the scenarios are attack on the depot, time period two, one player, incoming nukes, one player, time period two, Intercepting the probe, one player time period four, the L5 run, two to four players time period one, station assault, uh, two to five, time period one, tech on the mothership, two to seven players time period three, first contact time period three. So show setup and then get into play. So I'm gonna be doing this scenario three intercepting the probe it's one player time period four it's the united earth federation sf-14 and the aliens are one unmanned probed counterplacement special rules ss-14 man to the map board from any hex long map site board side four the probe starts in hex 2018 moving at speed one and direction one. The probe is armed with one forward firing, 180 arc, laser battery at level nine. You will fire automatically every other phase when the fighter is in its field of fire. The probe must not must receive nine hits to be destroyed in the basic game. The probe must receive 90 P hits to be destroyed in the advanced game. The probe will move each phase by comparing the relative position of the fighter to the probe and rolling two dice. Cross index. The total of the dice roll of the relative position of the fire to obtain the probe's movement. Consult the table below. So this is the randomization movement of the probe. For determining relative rotation, use the positions of the units before it actually moves in a phase. Advanced game, the probe uses a tech scan, which I'll be doing the advanced game. Tech scan level of 7, a cloak level 7, and shields are 5. 
So first of all, here's the setup of the display. First of all, a shout out to contributor David. He gave, in the beta version of this I set out, he gave me a lot of insight to it. And then first of all, we show the setup as displayed in the SF14. So it's take period level four, and so the energy factors, 800. In the rules it says put the markers below the level, but to me that wasn't intuitively obvious, so I'm just gonna put them right on the level. So for instance, 800 would be on the 800 instead of 700. It's just too confusing to me to do it the other way, so. So energy factors, 800. Long range scanners, nine. Main thrusters, nine. Shields, five per side. Laser batteries, port, eight. None in center, starboard, eight. Weapons pod, five. So that's availability for choosing which weapon. Computer systems, 12. Overload capacity, 90. Tactical scanner, 9. Side thrusters, 9. Cloak, 9. Life support systems, 12. Energy torpedoes, 20. And then in this scenario for the probe, it, um, I, I mark them with the, the green markers. So the, the probe has tax scan level of seven, a cloak level of seven, and the shields are at five. And then the energy usage in the advanced game. So the action markers will be used to note the use of various tracks and the control console as they're used. So when you do do the actions, then you you track the energy expenditure in the energy factor, and then you reset after the end of a turn. The following tracks use one factor of energy per move for each level used: long range scanner, tech scan, side thrusters, any shield, and cloak or altitude change. Each main thruster costs 10 energy factors. Each phase that laser batteries are fired, an amount of energy factors is spent equal to the total number of laser battery levels used in the firing. And wing mounted batteries must fire together even if only one is in the target field of fire. And the, uh, so I, I have five weapon pods available and and I'm allowed to have one you know special weapon type you know besides the lasers so I'll be choosing to use the energy web and that cost five weapon pods points so I can get that within my five it costs four so I can get it within my five and it costs 25 points every time it's fired so and here's the map and it in the scenario it says to use basically have the the probe, you know, going this direction and uh, start the ship up here. But for display purposes, I'm just gonna have it go in this quadrant. The effect is the same. It's just the dis distances are the same and everything. So first of all, I have this, the ship entering here. There's the motion marker. And then the probe with its motion marker is located as stated. And I'm use the option of having asteroids. So I'll start the game with one asteroid moving in here. Any phase in which a drift movement occurs is drift. Once the first thrust action has been marked, no other thrust actions may occur in phases that are not drift phases, unless all drift phases contain a thrust action. See, hence, so I don't do a thrust the first time. And this is where the clarification helped. Um, but then in the subsequent ones, I'm doing thrust when there's drift. Before, before a ship is allowed to thrust during a non-drift phase, all drift phases must also con must contain a thrust. So a few early turns into it here. The asteroid has moved up 
of turns there. The ship is up to a speed of eight. Probe has done a couple random movements and has moved over one and is pointing this direction. So the first phase is, is no movement, but we'll allocate energy to the basically the three front shields there. And they're each five, so it's 15. I'm going to allocate energy for the tech scan and cloak, and those are nine each. And I'll keep track of the phase here. Second phase is a drift. Keep the drift marker there. Move the asteroid because it's also going at eight, so I'll have it drift when the ship does. Um, and also, still, we have the 33 points we're using here, so we reduce it enough. We'll see which direction the alien probe is pointing. From the scenario, it's stated here. Nine. So given its orientation, be doing a left turn. And then next phase. So again, reduce another 33. Since we're having a couple of shields up, or three shields up. Let's check our distance now. Let's see if we're in range. So it's got to be within a range of 12 for the energy beam. It's close, not quite there yet. He's got a range of 14 right now. If he gets that number or less with his roll, it'll be a hit. And he's got a, so it's a tech scan. His tech scan value, which is 9 minus the cloak of the the alien probe, which is seven, so he's got a plus two, so he's got a chance if he rolls a 12. No, he doesn't hit. And it's still out of range of the alien probe because they need, they would need a 14, and right now, well, they're, the distance between, they have a tech scan of seven, and their cloak of the ship is nine, so it's a minus two, so they would need to be at about 10. So next phase. So the 33 plus 10 for a thrust, so 43, reduce it by that. And then let's do our thrust and drift. So drift is in this direction, and then thrust is also in this direction. And then drift for the asteroid. So the energy web has to be pointing right, right at it, and it's it's not it fires straight on, so you can't do that right now. Next phase. So right turn. So again, we got the shields, those shields up, tax and cloak. So 33, and then he's spending energy for the turns. We use the energy to a right turn. So still a 12 out. Fire. Nope. Need a 10 or better. Next phase, we'll do a thrust and drift. So 33, so 43 total reduce. We'll do the the drift thrust drift here. It's not quite straight on yet, so we're at a range of so they're at ten. So now the the probe has a potential to hit. We'll see if the probe hits. No, probe doesn't hit. And now that the probe has fired, they'll automatically fire every other turn. So we'll indicate that. So first of all, we take off the energy points. The probe can't fire now because it's on an off turn. 
Next phase. So again, we're at the 33. I was initially going to do a left turn there. Uh, but for purposes here, I'm not. I've decided not. I'm not going to do that left turn. And now the probe can fire. We'll do this one firing. So eight. If it gets a six or better, it gets a six or better. So he hits. And again, it's the he's firing at eight, and we'll take off that energy for that as well. So knock it down another sixteen. He hits, we'll see what gets through. So he's got an energy of eight and an attack of eight, and it's uh, they got three shields, so again, it's three, they're all in the three column 32 P5 plus W. So again, we'll knock, knock down the P5. The probal attack. So again, the range is eight. So if he gets a ten or better, nine just misses. Thrust and drift. So forty-three. Take off the forty-three energy points. For the thrust and drift. Take down another ten. So he drifts. Cross. Next time he'll be in alignment there for his energy beam. Probe can't fire this time. And then next turn, I was I had planned I was going to do a right turn, but I said I'm not going to be doing that since he's in alignment right now. The probe can fire this time. And the probe can fire it because it's still within, he's firing at a 180 arc and he's still, he's got a P9 laser. Let's first see if he hits it, 11. So as far as how much damage he does, it's the, so he's got a level 9 laser, the shields are at 5. So 4 get through, he'll roll in the 4 column. 24. P5, P15 plus W plus K. So he reduces his maximum power by 15. From 800 down to 785. W is weapons pod hit. It's got a total of 5 there, and he's only using 4 for the the energy beam, so he should be okay there. Um, K, cloaking hit, so reduce the amount of cloaking. And then next phase, so drift and thrust. So let's take the energy off for that now. So he's got 15 in shields, he's got 9 foot tech scan. But only eight for the cloak now because the cloak's been reduced. And the attack the ship hits again column three. So fifty-six. Probe loses five more. And now the energy beam goes, because he's right in line with that. And then the way the energy beam goes is, got to move that to catch up with some drift there. If the ship is moving at six or less, the ship is required to stop. The ship speed is reduced to zero for the next turn, so that the ship's owner can change it to any direction, and he'll be going this way. 
So the chip can't move the next, the alien probe can't move the next turn. And you look at the, on the combat table, as far as the, the ship, the Kami takes the same as the speed. And the ship speed is two, since it was initially one, and then it did a thrust of one. So you look in column two, all the dice, 36, P10, so it took 10 damage. So it's done, it's taken 60 damage. So hopefully that gives you a sense of how the play goes. So that's shooting stars from Mikinto in 1980. Uh, it's a tactical combat game. I think it's fairly typical of Yakinto and it's got some interesting aspects that you can either make like really simple or there's a lot of options you can add on to make it more interesting. Um, I like that uh, it has a lot of options you can add on to very, you know, to customize it, and you can make scenarios that uh, it's got a lot of scenarios in there already to give it some flavor, but you can basically generate any scenario you want to do. It's got uh, solitaire options, which is nice. You can uh, you track everything on the you know, on the boards, so that's nice. Um, I don't do a lot of tactical combat games, but I, I found it enjoyable. I like you know the flexibility it has. It doesn't. It's not. Um, it's you know quite different than games like uh, Starfleet battles, that sort of thing. In that, its tracking is you know maybe a little bit simpler, but. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It does have, you can kind of make it as complex as you want. And it's nice to have a base game to build off of. Components are you know, standard Ikinto, which kind of wish you had the thicker counters, but they're normal sized counters like other games, which is fine. Um, I, I found it enjoyable, and I, I'll probably do it again. I'll give it a, a 7 out of 10. Thanks for your time.